What's up, Catherine Powell? What's up, Catherine? What's up, Nurse Quill? Catherine, baby, that was a nasty piece of hat you had on for Palm Sunday, ma'am. Okay, you was giving, yes, yes. Okay, I saw you. What's up, Nurse Quill? What's up, Peggy Bundy, Hara Peacock with the mange? Thank God someone else went live. Hey, Pastor, what's going on? Well, look, let me tell y'all something. I saw um, a little bit of Brianna, and she was playing a little bit of this heat, and she was talking to Pizarro. Is it me? Uh, anyway. You know, I don't I don't understand. I think it's a lot of codependency going on there. First of all, Ness is very controlling and manipulative of this heat. This heat gets upset and she throws Ness under the bus by going to Pizarro and her ops, I mean, you know, Ness's ops, Pizarro, and spilling all the tea, three hours worth of stuff. And at one point, I just turned it off because I'm like, okay, this is bull crap. All this is is uh, a controlling relationship. You have a woman who pretty much is, you know, supporting Ness and and and, and, and see both. I see both of them controlling each other. You have one person trying to manipulate and pull the strings by helping somebody financially and pulling the strings that way. Then you have the other person pulling the strings by limiting who that person can correspond and speak with. And they're both doing it. Ness, according to the streets, has lost her job because of this woman. This woman seems like she has a really big temper and and she has this power struggle where she wants to destroy everyone because she's so great, but yet we see how Ness controls her as well. It's a whole codependency dynamic over there and it's very toxic and it's not healthy. And somebody just needs to be smart enough to leave and walk away because it's really sad on both ends. And the thing is, if you don't deal with your childhood trauma, then it will balloon and haunt you in your adult life. And I think you have two women who have not dealt with their trauma adequately, and it's showing up in this toxic behavior in this relationship. They could be putting on for clicks and views. They could be. And the thing is, it seems like this heat really likes um, Pizarro. It seems like this heat has, as Bless Watkins would say, an infinity, not an affinity, but an infinity for Miss Pizarro. Because as I was listening, I'm like, she's really talking, baby. They are, okay, baby, let me see. Let me show this. Let me say this. Baby, they are really getting ready to take Diddy out. Diddy is being investigated by the people who deal with sexual trafficking. And his sons were in handcuffs. And those agents are not searching homes unless they got something. And Diddy is going to be another Jeffrey Epstein, but black version. And the sad part about it is that black men are treated much more severely and harshly than the others. And it's going to be really interesting what they come up with. And this thing is major news. Okay. So, you know, all I'm going to say is people don't think. We still live in America. and our foundation was not founded on equality. It was founded on white supremacy. And just because you have a lot of money and you're black doesn't mean that you're out of the clear. And let me say this and be very clear. 
a lot of people do not like su successful black men. And in that case, Diddy should have known that if you get caught, it's going to be 10 times worse. And I'm not saying that they don't come after us, but if you do the crime, you're going to suffer more than the other person. And so it's going to be really interesting how this plays out. Well, you know what? If that's, let me say this, if that's their show, then that's their show. I don't know why he left his sons behind, but they sure was in handcuffs, weren't they? Oh, fake bonding for content and views. I, I, I agree. I agree with you. It's just sad that he's going to pay a, a big price. I mean, that's all. Well, PDP, that may be true. I don't know. And like I said, I don't know what I know except for what his accusers have said. And if his accusers are telling the truth, then it was some pretty ratchet rank and file stuff going on. But we will see. We shall see. So, you all, with the nest and this heat thing, it could be a show. Um, but it is what it is. Um, I, I, I'm looking at these uh, people hosting these new people from different sectors. And you all, they don't bring any talent to the field. All I see are grown people arguing and fighting on people's channels to get into the B-sector spaces. And again, this is where the OGs come in. We did skits, we sang, people sold, we had talent. These people are, that are coming in now, they're not talented. They're not talented. All they can do is argue, dox, cuss, and fight. And it's not funny. It's not funny. And so my platform is not open to people who cannot dialogue, for people who don't have a talent or a knack. It's not open to people who are not good communicators. Let me say this. Let me be very clear. A lot of people don't like Stump Down. And Stump Down may have some issues with me. I don't have issues with Stump Down. But Stump Down could read, and he was funny, and get into the receiver, travel. QB was funny. When he came on and started talking his uh, talk, it was hilarious. Tracy was a person you either loved or hated. And we found out on that cruise ship that Tracy does have a comedic type of stick to herself. When Tracy said, all I wanted to do is get to the conquest, because when I got to the conquest, I knew I had a guaranteed burger. Baby, you can't beat that content. Okay, you can't write scripts like that. Tracy said, if she could get to that ship, she knows she's going to have a guaranteed burger. Baby, that took me out. Tracy snatched my whole breath away. Tracy was the queen of the conquest. I know I was on the conquest. I know Sean Bradley was on the conquest. But baby, the drama, the funny, the land on the pavement, the baptism on South Beach, the betrayal. That was all Treacy. Baby, that was all Treacy. See, I give honor where honor is due. It, it ain't no hate here. 
I don't feel no less than a content creator because Treacy was the queen of the conquest. Baby, Treacy had me in stitches, okay? Now, you can say what you want, but baby, when she was laying on that concrete, because she said it was cool down there, and she told the man she was just taking a little nap, I was done. I was done. Okay? And let me say this. When Tracy came to meet our group, she came lit. So if you're going to party, and if you want a party and somebody who's going to be lit, call Tracy. Call Tracy. Because Tracy going to set it off. Burgers, baptism, and betrayal. Okay, T Lounge. B, B, and B. Okay? Burgers, baptism, and betrayal. Baby, it, that, 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 that sums it up right there. Right there. Baby, that cruise was, and don't get me wrong, y'all, we had a good time in our own right. But Tracy took that thing over to the top, okay? Tracy was drinking the Bahama Mamas, and Tracy was getting her whole life. And you can't, you can't hate on Tracy. And I was happy to see that side of Tracy, that humorous side of Tracy. Now, I know when she was telling Honey to pull up down there in the parking lot, down there in the San Antonio, I was rolling in. Pull up, Honey. Pull up. Pull up, Honey. Baby, I was hollering right there. So, again, all I'm saying is the people that we had in the B sector, they were very, very funny and talented. And I would always look for people who just had that knack, that funny. They were funny. They were humorous. And if if I could feel something, and you let me tell you something, y'all. I don't hate QB. I don't hate QB at all. I think QB is very talented. Unfortunately, we can get with people who can curtail and hinder our talent. Because, see, what you want is a mentor who's going to push you forward. And want you to shine. You don't want anybody who's afraid to push you because they think you're going to take something away from them. But you, you get what I'm saying? So, shout out to the OGs. Shout out to the people who came when you came through the house system. And when somebody sponsored you and said, mm, this person got the it. This person got this because you could feel it. We don't have that anymore, but that's okay. That's okay. Now, let me, let me say something to you all. When I was hot, I was hot. When I was getting views, I was getting paid extremely well. But there is a price to pay with success on YouTube. There is a price to pay. And I went through a great deal on YouTube. People said you ought to leave. But no, I have a right to come up here to have a good time and to do my set. YouTube to me is not my real life. YouTube to me is just like doing a comedy club or doing stand-up comedy for me. I went to go see some more and Lavelle Crawford and Tony Roberts. They have, they said some crazy stuff on stage, but I know those people's lives are not like that. I know those people have families. I know that, um, they are law abiding citizens for the most part, but when they get on stage, they become the comedian. And that's how I feel. Unfortunately, we have a lot of people who mix their real life and their real persona on YouTube and they come. So my thing is I had to make a decision. What was more important to me? See, I'm not trying to be in Hollywood. I'm not trying to have a uh, star studded event where somebody discovers me and I become a star because see with fame, there comes a price with fame and I'm not willing to pay that price. 
I'm not willing to be owned by anyone. At least with YouTube, I can come in when I want to and go when I want to. With YouTube, I determine my own content. See, if I had an agent, I couldn't turn around and say in 2024, it's about you're either part of the problem or part of the solution. I, I wouldn't be able to do that. And I understand with seriousness and really focusing in on things that matter, you're not going to be popular. Whereas I could get 500 in the room, uh, maybe it may be 100, maybe 200 in the room. But one thing I can say about me is I don't compete against these people here. I compete against myself. And long as I can get an AdSense check every month, which ever since I've started and been monetized, I have never missed an AdSense check. I have never dipped below $800. Never. See, I don't get caught up into who's doing this, who's doing that. Because in my real life, in my professional life, I'm doing what I need to do. Now, unfortunately, there have been some bumps along the way because people try to destroy my professional life. I, I was doing chaplaincy and some other things. I had two jobs making really good money. Thank God, though, after the chaplaincy job, I just got picked up with another agency. But these people are vile and malicious. And see, this is why I don't fight for people anymore. This is why you will never see me windmilling for people and doing all of this stuff. Because, again, it's not important to you until it happens to you. And it's very funny that everybody's like, you got them worthless degrees, but when they called the job, they found out that I was really working. It was one point people said I wasn't even working. So I've just learned you have nothing to prove to people. Um, I've, I've stopped watching a lot of people because there are some people you all who are in a dark place and it's not light and it's not funny. You have people who are really jealous or insecure for whatever reason. So when I tell you, I don't want to hear about what people have to say about me. I don't want to hear it. Now, some content creators will go after people and want to give them word for word and go tit for tat. I don't. I do not throw my pearls in front of swine lest they trample them. And baby, there are a lot of pigs out there. And so I would rather go ahead and focus on things like dysfunctional relationships. How can we bring people together? Can we have a conversation? And my thing is, if people really have an issue with me, all I got to do is click the link and we can have a civil conversation. But as long as people are passive aggressive and doing all of this foolishness, I have no interest, no interest to even waste my time on people. Now, I have 80 people in here and that's all I need because the replays are everything and people will replay. And let me say this. Nothing good is going to last forever. There's always going to be somebody to come and take your place. That's why I never took the title of king of this or prince of this. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I just needed to get paid. That's all I needed to do. So I hope I'm saying this to somebody because, see, we get things twisted up. This is a comedy. I will say this. I have been here for about five or six years. And what I have is good. And if I'm, I'm meant to have more people, I'll have more people. If not, I'm not. If I'm meant to go ahead and leave you two, when the time comes, we'll just leave. Because it was a good track while it lasted. That's how I feel. I don't get caught up in this. I have made good money on YouTube. It was a good run. But I do not let people who I don't know, who I've never met, play a major role in my life. I don't, I don't let people pay rent or pay or live free in my head like that. I just don't. And I hope I'm saying something to somebody because a lot of us, even in our real life, 
people who don't really count, we trying to impress. And those same people got issues that they're, you know, that they're grappling with. Now, at one point in time, I was doing the thing, but the season is not the season anymore. So maybe it's a season for the Briannas and the Pizarros, a season for the Lemons. But at some point in time, it's going to be somebody new and it's going to be their season. There's a season to everything. But there's also a resurgence. But my thing is, I'm content. I'm cool. Long as I have an audience, long as there are people who are saying, Jay, we're going to support you and come on, we're going to do it. That's it. People are hitting me up about the next trip because regardless of what people had to say, we went on that cruise and folk was lined in to the point where people even hate to come and follow us. Baby, don't let people talk you out of your blessing. Keep moving forward. As long as you're satisfied doing what you're doing, other people really don't matter. And I hope I'm saying this to help somebody today. And my thing is, I am not going to um, be on that downward trend of having thunderdomes and people cussing each other out and, and, and not, no one's being helped. That's not my goal. My goal is to make people laugh, to be lighthearted, to talk about serious matters sometimes to be a little messy and move on. So I'm saying this today because the devil is a liar and the devil is busy. Let me say this, and this is not being arrogant. This is being me. And I want you to be the same way. You better know who you are. I love me for my faults. I love me for my triumphs. I love me. You know I love me? Because God loved me and God made me. And nobody could get me to hate myself because I know who I am. I'm Jay Wilson. I'm Florida Red. Now, you may not like it, but that's your problem. I love it. I love it. Love yourself. Treat yourself. And I don't care how many mistakes you made. Get up. Get up. And do better. Get up. Dust yourself off. And say, I can make it. Don't let nobody turn you around. Learn from your past. Live in your present. And prepare for your future. I feel this today because I feel that a lot of us have been beaten down. And people have told us this in the third. And y'all don't understand why these people trying to tear you down. They're sitting up there miserable. Baby, I'm being blessed daily. Do you understand me? And your opinion of me has no bearing of what I'm doing in the world. Oh, come on. Because I knew I was somebody before I came on YouTube. I didn't need nobody to validate me. I was already validated, had the stamp already. Y'all better listen to this. And, and just because you are so confident doesn't mean you're arrogant. That doesn't mean you're conceited. That means you are convinced. That means you know who you are. And, and I don't have to put nobody down to know who I am. I am proud of every degree earned. And you know what? I know that you can do it too. And when you earn yours, I am just as happy. But I earned it. Nobody gave it to me. Every paper I wrote, oh my God, I'm, I'm glad about it. Every time I walked across that stage, I was happy about it. And you may not like where I went to school, but I'm good with it. And so are the careers that I have been afforded to have. Opened many doors. Don't you let nobody talk you out of a blessing because they're insecure and miserable. Baby, if you get a new job, I am just as happy with you getting a new job. Because I know that a lot of people wish they could have a job. 
Come on now. When you trying to go, let me tell you something. This is what I was happy when Rico was getting rehab and therapy. Because that means that he has awakened to his potential. He said that I can do better than this. And I realize I got an issue and let me turn this thing around. And I'm happy. And I hope that he doesn't go downward because of his grandmother's illness. But I hope somehow this situation will turn him around to let him know that he can make it. Now, I know Rico and I have fought, but I want Rico to make it. I don't want Rico to be a part of the system. Now, again, other content creators can fight who they want to. I can't tell other content creators how to treat people. I can't tell them to do that, but that ain't none of my business. I know what I must do. And I'm I'm real with that. You know, people want to say, Jay, you all about the money, you greedy. And y'all, y'all talking about the gentleman's panel. Let me tell you something. The gentleman's panel was fair. We would, you know why we weren't fighting over money? Because whatever you did on your channel is what you earned. And you know what? Whatever you did on your channel was your business. I think the gentleman's panel was fair and equitable. I think that you could take the gentleman's panel and do a lot of things with it if you wanted to. But that's it. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. And I'm being real on tonight. I want you to hear me and I want you to hear me well. People have called me a scammer and everything. Baby, we don't put on events and people, you don't hear not one person say he scammed me. You have not heard one person say, oh, that event was not great. No, we had good times because we do good events. And it's funny because people who always got something to say ain't never done nothing. See, I can give Sean Bradley props of judging events because sean has done events but people ain't never done nothing got something to say that should be an indication right there this is why you can't listen to people and this is why you really got to go on and meet your destiny and do what you got to do i'm proud of the cruise ship situation let me tell y'all something people in two and a half months paid their money and came on that cruise ship we only asked for 12 people. 40 folks showed up and we had the time of our life. I wasn't up there looking for people. People were there. And, and let me tell you something too. What the devil meant for bad, God will mean it for your good. Because Tracy and MU was coming to antagonize. But God made that thing right. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. And we sitting up there taking pictures and having a good time. Oh, my God. Now, Sean Bradley came. Didn't have no effect. Now, I'm glad he got a little shine. He got a little shine. But I guess they had a good time on the cruise. I don't know. Because, again, we weren't really concerned about them. We were doing our own thing. But what I will say is it was three groups, three OGs. You had Tracy, you had Sean, and you had Jay Wilson on one ship, and we had a good time. People sitting up there talking, and and, and they do not one. Ain't been on one ship. People was trying to get folk to lie. Baby, we done been on that ship and, and you still ain't hearing nothing but good things. Baby, y'all can't let people run y'all life. Let me say this. When people are saying nasty stuff, all you got to do is live in your truth and do it. Okay? So what? So I, I'm saying this for a reason. Don't let these folk hold you back. Who cares? Because and this is what that's this is what I'm trying to tell you all tonight. Who cares who says something about you? Who cares? All people want is your attention. All people, I don't even give people my attention. 
I just keep it moving. So what you said is, I'm your content. Great. But I'm not going to give you no shine. I'm going to do what I need to do. I give shine to people who deserve it. Don't you let nobody hold you back. Don't you let what people say become your reality. Don't you give people space in your brain for free. You keep on doing what you need to do. I don't argue with people like I did at the beginning because I argue with people because it was good content. But at a time, it gets old. It gets stale. Same old read, same old stuff. And baby, you got to move on. And the truth be told, quiet be kept, a lot of these people who report on me, they don't have nothing else to talk about. Okay, they don't. So it is what it is, and I'm keeping people in business, I guess. So that's what I have to say. Um, I don't know what's going on with the Nets and the Heat thing. I I just I just see that Heat goes to the ops and and spill the tea. Um, now I do not know if it is true that this Heat caused the Nets to lose her job. I have heard that. I don't know if it's true or not, but again, people come in your life either to help you or to hurt you. And baby, love don't be causing you to lose no jobs. Love don't be causing somebody to betray you like this. And then he, you up there trying to be tough, but you, you really sensitive in your spirit and you really get hurt. And this is why I don't deal a lot with you because you so unhinged that you might do something that would really seriously hurt somebody because you were so sensitive. And that's the sad part about it. And and I really never wanted to be associated because I, I said, no, this person is not stable. So I, I hope y'all work it out. I hope y'all work it out. She said that Ness don't have no stability and she helped support Ness. And so she pretty much said that she supported Ness and she, she dated Ness on pity. And then she became in love with Ness. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Mm. Anyway. Your first event was everything to a beef sector classic, and we will execute you to put on. Dion Court, thank you. Thank you. When we when I went to um National Harbor to meet with some of the uh content creators there, we had a good time. We were on the mechanical bull, had a really great time there. I met a few people at Norfolk State University's homecoming. We had a, ooh, I met a baby. I met a lot of people at the white party. Oh my God. I met a lot of people at the white party. Let me tell you what was really nerve wracking about this. And this is when I said, uh, uh Jay, we got to do something different because people were coming up saying, Jay Wilson. And of course I had my partner with me and baby, they were talking like I knew them from a long time ago. And I'm like, excuse me, why? I said, and so they had to tell me who they were, but it's like nerve. You, you like, I don't know you. And then they tell you, you know, they say, I know you, I know you. And it's like, okay, you're Jay Wilson. I'm going to tell you what y'all, it's one thing to be on YouTube, but when you start meeting people in person, <laughs> it becomes a little different. And it, you know, it's a little unnerving, to be honest. So some people like that. I'm an extroverted person, but I love my alone time. And I like, you know, solitude at times. I can have a great time. I'm a very social person, but I like solitude. That's me. So, when well, these people want this fame and fortune, I'm good. I'm good with a little change from AdSense every once in a while. 
but YouTube has never been a competition for me. I never got into the numbers game. The only reason that I um, mentioned the numbers is because it would piss people off. As far as I'm concerned, don't piss me off. There's 79 people in here. I'm good. At least it's 79 people in here. Child, because there's some people who don't have nothing but 15 and 20 folk. <laughs> but anyway, it's all good because it doesn't really bother me. So my, my life is great outside of YouTube and I have other things to take care of this. And this is a little change every once in a while. I might go on up the road to Dallas or go across the street to Houston. And, and that's what we do. Let me say this. I felt blessed that you all blessed me with old nasty piece of hunk of change for my birthday. Y'all didn't have to do that. I didn't ask you all to give any money. I was serious. If I, let me tell y'all something. If I didn't get one dime for the mere fact that y'all showed up would have been enough for me because I've been accused of scandaling people and swindling people out of their money and stuff. People were mad because people were giving. But when I saw these plays and people begging for dollars a day and all this stuff, I said, I, I ain't going to do that because I really don't need it. And that's why you don't hear me begging for the change and stuff. And if people do something, that you rarely see a cash app come through. Not a cash app, but a super chat, rather, come through. And that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. But I'm still here. I'm still here. And I don't need to follow the status quo. I'm not mad at panels. The gentleman's panel was a panel. So I've done panels before. The only thing I think that I'm not really built for is the competitions. I'm tired of those competitions and challenges. I'm challenged and competitioned out. And I don't like the fundraising for the prizes. Mm -mm. I don't like that. Now, what I did do was stuff that was smart. Let me say this. When we would do the cash out parties, everybody won. But y'all know when y'all go to bingo, the house always win. You know the house gonna win. And I ain't never been shy about that. But one thing I can say about my cash out parties, baby, especially when I used to do them over the holiday and people needed extra uh, uh, Christmas gift money, get my stuff out the layaway money, I need an extra honey ham, or I need to get a turkey, baby, they would come to that cash out party. And the thing about the cash out party was you had to pay it forward. So if you got $20, at least give $5 and pull it, pull it for and people and see it taught people that, you know what, if I pay some forward, then I'm going to be blessed and people were blessed. And let me say this, I was blessed. And when I got a certain amount, I gave, but yes, I made money off those cash out parties. You see, you see how easy that is. I ain't trying to scam nobody. It was a blessing to me, too. It was a win-win for everybody. Folk gave, folk received, folk passed it forward. People gave me money. I called them out. I put their name up. Folk gave them money. And then I got to a certain point, and I blessed the people. And I told people, if you got $20, at least give five. I'm not telling you to give half. At least just give five. See, it was about honesty and transparency. And people couldn't take that. People couldn't take that. You are telling people exactly what you're doing. But, if, you know, people like honesty. People will give when they know what they're doing. And it's their decision not to or to give. And you know how we always start? If you don't have no money, you can still come. But if you get some, give it. And if you don't want to give nothing, you don't have to. It, you, you're not forced to do anything. When people was blessing me for them Uno readings, baby, y'all know that I was going to do them Uno readings, but people liked it and they gave because they liked the entertainment. Am I lying? When we was doing the Avatar readings and people was blessing me because it, they, they, it was funny and people enjoyed it. 
So, you know, and y'all need to thank Miss Gina for a lot of that, baby. Miss Gina can come up with some, can't she? Miss Gina started the um, cash out party. I was laughing at Miss Gina. But baby, I said, let me let me do this little cash out thing. And baby, the thing was a blessing. Yes, God. Now, I don't do no um, palms and I don't be reading no tarot, as Miss Gina would say. I don't do tarot cards, but the, the switch and the twist was the Uno cards. I would look at the numbers and the colors. And I mean, y'all, we had a good time. You, you had to be creative. And that's what the OGs were about, creativity. And it seems like the people who were non-creative always had a problem with the creative people. Oh, that's a word right there. Baby, when people don't have no talent, they mad because you got it. They mad because you got that it. I didn't have to beg. I just did Uno card reading. I didn't have to beg. I just did avatar reading. I didn't have to beg. We just did cash out parties. That, that's it. Folk thought they had killed me. Saints of God. People thought they had killed me because they called the job. And I lost it now. But they called me and they said, hey, we got something else for you. Again, because there's a shortage in the medical field. And I learned my lesson too. I said, you know what, Jay? There's some things you can't do anymore. You can't be free like you used to. You're going to have to restrict some things. Because I learned from it. I, you really learn from it. But baby, the people got mad because the folks said, we're going to give you a blessing. And I walked out with $3,000 and the people almost lost their mind. Now, Miss Philadelphia. Dion Court, Nurse Nurse uh, Quail, MSN, Catherine Powell, Petey Pete, Janelle Johnson, Lena Pretty Eyes, Fake Bonding for Content Views. Baby, they was happy. Ooh, they chuckled. They had old nasty Kiki. Jay Wilson, I got called and lost a job. Ooh, the people, nobody went bill for me. Baby, it was content. Baby, Baby, I told the cheering what happened. I put on some uh, water in my eyes. Because you know what? I'm, I'm an Aries. You can't make me cry. Baby, you can't make me cry. I'm going to make you cry. And I'm going to piss you off before you piss me off. Because at the end of the day, I knew I had options. At the end of the day, I had another job. Hello, somebody. And I went on there and I cried. I gave the people what they want. They wanted my head to be bowed down. They wanted me to be broken and contrite. And baby raised three thousand dollars, and the girls got mad. I'm like, you can't win from losing, huh? God is. God is. Dion, they were upset. See, that's an OG. That's an OG. OG didn't have to retaliate on nobody. Didn't pay evil for evil. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. When people's car turned over and it was on the roof, all I said was, Jesus wept. I ain't even say nothing back until we found out that the person was taking pictures and um, they were trying to get sympathy money, but that's okay. I said, Jesus wept. People wanted me to drag that man. I said, Jesus wept. And I keep, uh, what? Jesus wept and kept on moving. Now, let me say this. Deanna Irvin's page is down. Baby people made content when my page got porn bought. Woo, the girls just came on and baby, her page got snatched. Baby, it was rarely mentioned over here. I hope she get a page back. I don't have time to be repaying evil. But yeah, let me tell y'all something. Baby, don't repay evil for evil. Let God get the vengeance. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord, and I will repay. Now, I don't care how people feel about my religious life because me and God, we got a personal relationship. It don't have nothing to do with nobody else but me and God. We don't need no middleman or woman in between. It's just me and God, right? But I do believe that vengeance is mine, said the Lord, and I will repay. And I believe God will repay. That's why I, I hold my peace and I let the Lord fight my battle. That's why I truly believe the scripture 
Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. That's the problem with people now. They get too quick to speak. They get angry, and they want to tell everybody everything, and all you got to do is step back and let God do it. Touch your neighbor and say, step back and let God do it. Step back and let God do it. Now, if God tells you to do something, you do it. But see, sometimes we want to go fight. And God said, I got this. All you got to do is just step on back and watch me handle this. And that's why I've been dealing with you too. Baby, it's so many things that have been done, but I'm going to tell you what, God always handles it. Now, you can think whatever you want about me, but God, is his, his hands are on me, whether you like it or not. This is why I don't mess with people's salvation. This is why I don't question people's salvation, because I don't know where you are with God. And I don't question people's relationship with God. You know why? Because I'm not there. But God has blessed me. I don't believe in no voodoo. I don't believe in uh, burning candles and stuff. That's evil. I don't, I don't, I don't mean to, I don't wish harm on people. I let God determine what God is going to do. I let God determine what God going to do. Baby, y'all remember the lady was uh, burning candles. Baby, she had my picture on a candle. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? See, see, I'm talking about old school. I'm talking about old school beef sector. I'm talking about OGs who done went through voodoo, Santa Teria. We done went through hoodoo. We done went through everything. Baby, people was burning candles and doing seances and, and falling out under the spiritual, uh, uh, under the spirits and stuff. Baby, that lady was burning candles with my picture. And baby, she was burning candles. See, like the more candles she was burning, the more money was coming in the mail. Y'all remember, I was just checks was coming in the mail. Every time that lady was burning candles, baby, it seemed like, baby, it was so many checks coming. I almost went to go to the uh, voodoo store to buy the candles for a boo. I was going to send the candles to California. Girl, because you was burning them candles down. And it seemed like the more candles you was burning, the more blessings that was coming. I'm like, I almost started buying the candles. <laughs> PDP, okay, not spraying yourself with money, house, blessing, spray. Come on. How that working for you anyway? So anyway, you all, you got to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. Y'all was, and let me, let me say this too, and I'm going to go there again. Now, a lot of people are understanding what I've been saying all along. See, they thought it was funny when Dovey was doing all of that stuff. But when it happened to them, it ain't funny. I don't even know what happened with her and Rico the Brat. But Rico the Brat actually is not pleased. And then what she did to Honest Row, what she did to just read my book. You know, you, you got a host of people who have gone through these folks. Look at these patterns, people. Look at these patterns. You ain't never hear anybody say, I work with Jay Wilson and this is what happened to me. So, I'm just throwing that out there. Do not let people bring you down. Let your work speak for themselves. Let it speak for itself, rather. A lot of you all you know, saying Brian was trying to be shady. So you can't be shady with me when I'm doing what I need to do. I done been in my whole relationship for almost seven years and folks still trying to find somebody. And they admit they got some some mental behavior issues. I don't think it's mental. I think it's behavior issues that they need to work on. So anyway, I, it's just really interesting. And let me say this. I'm 54 years old. And I dated quality individuals, people who I, I was happy to take around other folk because it was a reflection of who I am. I have been in one, two, three, four before my relationship, now four serious relationships. And I dated quite a great deal. And I have no qualms with it. 
at all. I enjoyed my life to the fullest. No regrets. Everything happened for a reason. And that's all I got to say about that. So I don't have these people putting you up in a box. Enjoy your life. Now, I really can't tell you about a lot of people. I have really restricted myself to who I watch. I look for events. And if an event catches my interest, I go and watch the event. There are some content creators that I may watch. Most of the people I watch are really OGs, to be honest. Now, I watch Brianna Pettyville because somebody, hey, Haitian princess. I watched um, Brianna Pettyville because somebody hit me up and said, you know what? It seems like Ness and Miss Heat, this Heat is having another issue. I wanted to see that. So I went right on over and checked it out. And y'all, let me tell you something. I went to I, I went to sleep on Brianna because people kept on popping up on her platform. And first thought it was this heat, and then it was Ness, and then somebody, and baby, didn't and then when I woke up, baby, that thing put me to sleep. Rock up, baby, baby, that thing put me to sleep. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I must have been tired. That thing put me to sleep. When I woke back up, it was about 50 people on that platform. <laughs> I was like, who is it? And then I'm like, who are these people? And it's almost like they're trying to prove themselves to the beef sector to get into the sector. And I'm like, why are y'all doing that? And folk just letting them on because it's easy. You don't have to do anything on a, a, a panel. People fighting and stuff and folk look. And you don't really have to do anything but moderate. And that's how people making it work. I ain't mad at these people. And when you don't have that much talent and you don't have the gift of gab, platforms and panels are the way to go. I want to give a shout out to the OGs, Spill It Boy, Lady Nika, Sean Bradley, even though he's not with us. He's still on the community page. Um, the the um, young OGs, these people came right behind us a little bit. So you have your five babe, you have your treases, you have your your um, QBs and and people Deanna Irvin who came out of houses but did they thing. You know they just, they had. Let me tell you something. Baby, Deanna Irvin's country accent and the way she cuss and tell people, oh, baby, that thing right there had me laughing. I don't care what nobody says. She don't have to like me, but I'm going to give her her props. I'm going to give her her props. And she'd be ridiculously feeling herself in them Inspector Gadget dresses. Okay. Down there at the bottoms, over there at the joint. Okay. Oh, this has a hot pot. Baby, she be at them joints down in the Mississippi Delta. I ain't mad at her. Okay, you can't tell her she ain't doing it. Okay. Down at the Comfort Inn and Suites, okay, with the indoor pool. You can't tell her she ain't doing it. And she be ridiculously feeling herself. And that's the, that's the confidence we have. Hello? Somebody. Who else gonna say be smirchify my name? Okay, and one thing's for certain, two things for sure. We know that's Lady Nika. We know that's Lady Nika. We know when somebody say it's getting worse and worse, and I have an infinity. What is it, baby? We know that's Bless Watkins. I ain't mad at Bless. Bless isms. Okay, we know the Bless isms. We get it. We get it. I haven't seen Deanna since her page was taken down. I I, I haven't um, seen her. Um, and it's unfortunate. I don't think it's funny. Um, and just because I don't get along with people on YouTube, I don't wish them misfortune. And it's unfortunate that Deanna's page was taken down. 
because even though I didn't watch her as much, she was still funny. Even the crap she said about me was still funny. Okay, I didn't know what happened. I look, look, fake, but I don't know what happened. See, you telling me something. I ain't keeping up. Even the people who came into the B sector, like Simply Trey, baby, Simply Trey had talent. He was ridiculously feeling himself. He knew he lived in that color purple house, but he said them ceiling tiles was from Italy, honey. Baby, I fell out. I'm like, oh, them 10 tiles from Italy. And he had them. Color purple curtains where the black was charcoal and you can still see the light. Baby, I was, I was simply trade. Press, 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 press. Trey don't need no press. Baby, you can't get that stuff like it. You can't get that. I can even appreciate Trey from old school. I can even appreciate. Boss Lady TV New Jersey with all of them checking dolls in the background looking like romper room. I can appreciate that. <laughs> Baby, we had some good times back then. You had to upload your stuff. You would see what somebody said and then you would upload a response and people would wait for it. Baby, them, those, those, those were the good old days. Ooh, those were the good old days. People had talent. And you know what, y'all? It's just like today. This stuff now is so auto-tuned. I would rather hear Evelyn Champagne King than some of these auto-tuned people. I know Evelyn can sing. I would rather hear Jeffrey Osborne, Peebo Bryson, Luther Vandross, Freddie Jackson, Donny Hathaway than what we getting now. These men can't sing like them men. Doing 50 runs with no soul. Don't have no feeling. You don't feel that. You just singing the same. You had Cheryl Lynn. To be real. It's got to be real. And she went no size zero. Okay. You knew she went to the Golden Corral buffet. And Ryan's an old country buffet at the church. Okay. She wasn't skinny. But she could sign. Three degrees, the emotions, the pointer sisters, sister sledge. Baby, them women could sign. Minnie Rippleton. Let me tell you something. Nobody can't sing like Minnie. I like Mariah, but Mariah don't have no whistle voice like Minnie. I still like Mariah, though. And to me, she like an OG too, but she middle age OG. She ain't old, old OG, but she came in, she was influenced heavily by the OGs. And this is the way I feel about the beef sector. Haitian Princess Rodney has been around. He he was on the um Rodney has been chilling. He's been on a few panels and he's been around. So he's been around. Rodney's okay. Let me tell y'all something. I'm just being real on today. And this is how I feel like the beef sector is. And I love the technology. I like the new stuff. But I think that if the old stuff works, do it. But and, and don't get me wrong. I love vintage. Even vintage needs upgrading. Don't get me wrong. But you got to have a foundation. You got to have a foundation. And I, I, I don't know. You know, some of this stuff is not hidden. Let me say this, you all. I went to a concert in Cincinnati, and it was the Macy's Music Festival. And so it was Jill Scott, Elder Barge, Frankie Beverly and Mays, Keisha Cole, and it was another group. Let me tell you something. Elder Barge sang like he needed rent money yesterday. Baby, he was hitting those off of the scales and stuff. I was like, oh, my God, you better sing. You know Frank and Beverly going to turn it out. Jill Scott was okay. And Keisha Cole was just awful. 
Now, I like Keisha Cole with her reality show with her mama. But Keisha Cole in concert, it was disappointing. Them OGs knew how to bring it. When I tell you Elder Barge song, when I tell you Frankie, the, Frankie Beverly sang, and Jill Scott was good, but the people reacted with Elder Barge and, and Frankie Beverly and Mays. Jill Scott, and let me tell you something, ooh, they were so mad with Jill Scott because she sung, you love me, you're special. Okay, we wanted to hear you sing it slow. We didn't need a house version. So Jill Scott sung it in house version. Them people were hearing that. It was like, doom, doom. you love me. It was too fast. No, we didn't want to hear that. We wanted to hear, ooh, ooh, ooh. We didn't want to hear that fast stuff. We wanted to feel it. And so she messed that up. Now she sung Living My Life Like It's Golden first, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So, um, yeah, Keisha Cole was awful. Let me tell you something, too. Now, I was very, very, very surprised. So, another Philly strong man, um, music soul child, was at the... Hold on for a minute. What, 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 what? Hold on for a minute. Okay. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. So, Music Soul Child, Eric Benet, Biz Marquis, and Brownstone was at the Ebony Music, um, the Urban Music Festival in Austin, which comes right after Austin City Limit Music. So, during this time, you'll have South by Southwest Music Festival, Austin City Limits, and then the Urban Music Festival usually come right after South by Southwest. And the Texas Relays usually happen. So all of these things happen at once. And when I tell you Eric Benet sung his first off, I would, now, first of all, I love Music Soul Child's songs. So I was looking very forward to hearing some Music Soul Child. Baby, when I tell you he was off pitch, I was so pissed off. But baby, when Eric Benet got up there and sung, I want to be loved, I was like, okay, you want to be loved? Okay. I want to be loved. Let me tell you something. When I tell you Eric Benet sung the hell out of that song, it seemed like he needed to be loved. It seemed like Eric Benet just was going through something. And when I tell you he was singing, and y'all, I'm not an Eric Benet fan. I mean, I am not an Eric Benet fan. But when he sung at Urban Music Festival, I'm like, oh, hell. He tore it down. Did you listen to... Uh, uh, I, I haven't. Is that a new artist? Yeah, Frankie, Frankie is getting old, y'all, because let me tell you something, baby, baby, them people have Frankie Beverly on a whole ventilator with IV drips, okay, with a walker, and he'll be talking about some Southern girl, <laughs> God, no. Frankie Beverly be, be on a gurney, girl, Frankie Beverly be in a whole hospital bed at a music festival, okay, you make me happy. He'll be taken from the hospital bed and they just raise the bed up. Okay, y'all know they'll do it. It was time for Frankie to retire because maybe they would have him singing from a hospital room. Y'all know, baby, Frankie was already old. Hell, when he was at the Macy's Music Festival, he was old. Shuffling along. And baby, people act like Frankie was 15. So yeah, it's time for his farewell tour. Okay, I didn't know that fake um, bonding for music. So this is how I feel about the beef sector, see. I'm not saying stuff just to say it. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You know you had to have, ta you had to have talent to be in the beef sector. 
You had to be funny. You know, people were putting on skits. People were singing. People was doing that. You it, being in the beach sector was almost like being a stand-up comedian. I'm gonna even give VS her props. Now I'm not a VS fan, but baby, when VS did that Heidi fly, like she was on a pole and she was doing that stiff dance, a Heidi, and she had all that nasty piece of blonde wig. Baby, I was told down. When Rita did that bathroom challenge, when Rita did that bathroom challenge, you all, it was so funny. It was so funny. D. Ramsey used to do a lot of plays. The beef sector was a very different beast back then. And again, it didn't get dark until early. We saw it. We saw it. And it overtook the beef sector. And it was unfortunate. But we were busy having a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I refused to do it. Like I said, for 2024, it had to change. My thing is I wanted to work out differences with people. And I'm open to that right now. Well, I'm going to say this. It got real gutter with a lot of stuff. And everybody has an opinion on how it got gutter. Um, I, I, I saw it go down. And people, the worse it got, the people did things. And then I saw the cult-like activities. And I think that's when it becomes a really big problem, when it becomes cult-like activities. And people were doing things to please people. And they thought they could get closer to people by doing things that they know it was wrong. And this is why I look at some people with the side eye today, because I'm like, how can you be that influenced to do wrong? And you know, it's wrong. You know, I had names like Church of God and Cult, Voldemort, because people follow people just like Voldemort on Harry Potter. And I just thought it was really odd. And this is why we got some of the darkness in here now. Because a lot of people who came from that, they, they are the popular people now. And, and it goes to show you what they do. They ain't a friend to nobody. I don't understand how these people share their personal life with folk or even a little bit. And we've seen their works. We've seen how they operate. So, yeah, it's a little different, you all. So what else is going on? You, I mean, that's all I really came on to say. You know, people don't let people uh, mess you up. Have confidence in yourself. You know, have confidence in yourself. Don't be a follower. People have become malicious to hurt people, and it seems like people don't like to laugh anymore. I, but you know what? People don't like to be laughed at. See, it's okay when they can make people laugh. But when they become the brunt of the joke, they don't like that. And that's the problem. That's the problem, Rico, the sleaze that I ran into. Because what people said about me really didn't bother me. I would come back with another joke. But what people would do is get hurt. And then they would dox. Or they would do something very malicious because they couldn't roast their gag and they didn't like people laughing at them because they really took YouTube seriously and YouTube was tied into their real life. And I guess a lot of people have been laughed at in real life or have been um, roasted and gagged in real life and they didn't know how to separate the two. And then they start doing what they were doing. And this is why I got out. I'm like, these people, I'm telling you, let me say, I'm going to say it again. And I know people don't like me repeating, but I'm a person who repeats. And I'm going to tell you, 
when I went to Atlanta and when those people were really telling me that they were hurt and they say, Jay, you go too hard. I'm like, I don't go too hard. Let me say this. I've never called anybody's job. I never called anybody's family members. I never did that. And even when I had information about people's um, foreclosures because they was acting crazy, <laughs> I never showed it. I knew it was true. Now, again, baby, people did a lot to me. But my thing is, if you can give it, you can take it. And you ain't never hear me crying. But this is why I go back again and say, I'm not fighting for people in this sector. I, I'm not obligated. My thing is, I'm an independent contractor. I just happen to have a home built here, <laughs> but I'm an independent contractor. And I, I, I would be crazy putting myself out there to fight for folk who ain't never done anything for me, but make content out of it and had a field day out of it. So uh, -uh all of this um, pseudo chivalry, Talking about I'm fighting for the beef sector, child. You fight for the neo beef sector. You're not fighting for the OGs because the OGs ain't out here doing stupid stuff like that. And it's a few OGs that will even allow people on their platform to talk that mess because we're really not interested, to be honest. To be honest. And let me say this. I don't, I don't think that it's wrong to invite people from other platforms or sectors to our sector, but it should at least be compatible. And it should be people who could speak and have, um, yeah, yeah. Some of these people ain't funny. I don't want no problem. I, again, Simply Trey was funny as hell. He was annoying but funny at the same time. Let me see what y'all say. I feel like if people are that hurt, they shouldn't be online. It's about having self-awareness of self. When you know yourself, people should not hurt like that. That's the whole thing, Rico. A lot of people are not aware of themselves, and they get hurt. Child, let me tell you why trade left. Now, the word on the curve is, let me get a little messy. The word on the curve is that BS now, this is rumor. I don't know this to be true, but I heard that V.S. had got with his special ed teacher, and she was about to interview his special ed teacher, and he he ran off. <laughs> Baby, the girls was getting special ed teachers. Okay, the girls was calling special ed teachers. Okay. A special ed teacher. And she was going to interview the special head teacher, Jesus. And Trey was never heard from again. Now, that's the... <laughs> that's the rumor I heard. That's what I heard. Did he have to apologize to someone? No, it was Michelle. It was some person with a lot of followers. Her name always came up in mess. Baby, they said she had called the special ed teacher and she was about to do a whole um, series. Now, Nay Rob was um, OG. Nay Rob was OG. Baby, I would never forget when Nay Rob and Heidi Fly was getting ready to fight and child Heidi Fly was up there shopping at, um, what's that mall? Not Phipps Plaza, but what's the, uh, what's the other mall? Um, What's the other mall in Atlanta, the real big mall that's near Phipps uh, Phil, or Phillips or Phillips Plaza? Lennox. Baby, Heidi was waiting at Lennox, baby. And they rob ain't never show up, but Heidi was ready to go. Baby, that thing had me rolling. And then, y'all, we had Larry Nelson. Larry Nelson was something. He loved people one minute. Then he hated the folk. He was with the LGBTQIA community because they supported him. Then he started speaking against him. Maybe the, the, the LGBTQ supported him doing his situation and stuff. I mean, oh, Lord. But I never forget that day his gums was bleeding, baby. They said them gums was bleeding like Jesus had his hands on the cross. 
Baby, they said he had stigmata gums. Baby, they said stigmata gums. Baby, they said hey, them gums started bleeding. They said you really, you really, really is emotional. Not are emotional, but you is emotional when your gums started bleeding. Baby, they said he had stigmata gums. <laughs> Woo, Lord have mercy. But that's another person who could not take folk joking and laughing at him and it got real personal with him and you couldn't do nothing with larry y'all i'm telling you see this is when i this is when i start saying that there are no friends on youtube so larry and i had a coming to terms okay and so we we were cool when larry went through that situation and so I said, well, Larry, let's do this. I'm going to come to the Koji convention and I'm going to have my camera. You're going to have yours. And then we're going to act like we've seen each other and we're going to act like we upset. But, you know, we know we really cool. I thought it would have been cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, because we done made up behind the scenes. Child Larry done told everybody, oh, it was a mess. You, He couldn't hold water. Oh, my God. He couldn't hold water. You. <laughs> And I found out a lot of YouTubers are like that. So I just said, whatever. And you just keep moving. And y'all remember when people was picking at me when I was doing Uber. Now, I never did Uber Eats. Let me, let me tell y'all what I did. I did Uber and Airbnb. I never did Uber Eats. The reason why I didn't do Uber Eats because one day I had to go to McDonald's and pick up a shake and that shake started melting in my car. I'm like, hell no. I used to hate Uber Eats because then you would go to a restaurant and then you had to wait for the food. And I'm like, hell, by the time I did this, I could have had five people in the car and made money. So I was not an Uber Eats person. I did that one day, just one day. And that day, between that milkshake and waiting for people orders, I'm like, I'm done. I would rather take people. So I never did Uber Eats, but I never forget he was laughing at me because I did Uber Eats. And then the next day, you know, he doing favor. Now, again, I ain't going to mess up nobody gig because I would prefer you work than steal. I would prefer you to work than sell some illegal substances and go to jail. That's my thing. I ain't never been afraid of hard work. And it used to kill me. People used to be like, you Ubering and doing all of that, but you got all these degrees. It don't matter to me. I'm going to go ahead and work. Them degrees didn't make me who I was. I was who I was before the degree. I always did hard work. My mom said, if you wanted to get extra stuff for school, you need to work for it. And that's, that's, that's put a work ethic in me. And I went right ahead and did what I needed to do. I done cut grass on them wealthy people's yards on the beach side. I don't work that fast food. I worked in retail. I ain't afraid of hard work. See, that's the problem with people. And then people always want to say, oh, you think you're better than everybody else. No, people who think they're better than everybody else would never do those jobs because they think those jobs are beneath them. Nothing is beneath me. Long as it is uh, taxable money that's not illegal. I don't have a problem with it. And I always think that's funny because I'm like, you know, I don't think I'm better than anybody else. I sure don't. But you ain't going to act like, you know, I'm a piece of dirt. Absolutely not. And I think it's funny. I really laugh at it. Now, something like that would be fun. I want to do stuff like nobody has personality. And yeah. Never. Multiple streams of income should be the goal, especially, of course, Rico. So I listen to these people and Rico, like I said, I have, I have come on in 2024, but baby, they always bringing up a house. They always bringing up a house. Um, <laughs> I think it's so funny. My house was built ground up. I saw my house foundation built and I live in a suburb. I live in a suburb. I love my home. Regardless of what you think about. And let me say this, you all. I don't live in a Sitterly home. I don't live in a Scott Felder home. I don't live in a Ryland home. 
my home was built by Armadilla Homes, which is, I think now they have a new name, which is um, High View or something homes, but it changed names. It's a mid-range home builder. So it's on the scale of um, D.R. Horton, um, not Pulte, but D.R. Horton, um, Chesmar Homes. So it's on that level. But you know what? I like it. See, see, that's all that matters. I don't live in a custom home. My home, we have different elevations. And one thing I do like about in my neighborhood, you cannot put a house that looks like somebody else's house. So they have a variety. So I think we have about nine different variety of homes and we have different builders here. But I'm satisfied with what I have. I know where I live. I live in the suburbs. I know how much I bought my home for. And I know what the equity is in it now. And that's all that matters. I didn't buy my home for the satisfaction of other people. I bought my home because I liked it. And I said, I'm not going to rent. I'm not going to be paying other people's mortgages. And I got a home. And guess what? It's mine. And if family comes over or friends come over, I have three bedrooms upstairs that they can stay in. When we have family get-togethers, I have this and I have a backyard. I didn't want a big backyard and I didn't want a lot of property because I didn't want to have to cut the grass. And when it's time for me to get something else, it's going to be smaller. It's going to be one story because we will downsize. This is probably about the biggest house I will ever live in. And guess what? I'm satisfied with it. Yeah, but I'm satisfied. That's the whole thing. I'm satisfied with what I have. Be satisfied with what you have. I have a friend, and they live on the other side of San Antonio, and they have a 7,500-square-foot home. It is beautiful. It is custom-built. They imported things from all over the world to be in that house. That upkeep that keep ain't no joke. That light bill ain't no joke. Hello, somebody. They got to maintain that damn pool. So they got to call the pool person. They live on uh, five acres of land that got to be cut. I don't need that. You got to do what you got to do for you. And I'm not mad at it. I'm not jealous of them people. I know what kind of home I live in. It's a subdivision. But I did what I could do for me and what was right for me. You don't know what people got to do to maintain. Some people live in a condo and a law. Now, I don't, I don't want a condo. I don't want that apartment living. If I get a condo, it needs to be... And see, I don't want anything big. So my thing is I would probably get a smaller home. I would probably get a, a cottage style home or something like that. Yeah, I don't want a bigger home. I don't I don't like apartment living. I don't uh uh mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't want that. So I would probably get a smaller home. I would get a one story home, maybe three bedrooms, maybe, or even but but I have guests. So I do have friends and guests to come over. And so yeah. I would do that. But you got to do what you like to do. And it's really funny. Everybody want to read with the house. And, and I never forget it. You know, like I said, people's like, oh, yeah, look what you had to do. Because, yeah, I put two payments on me. I put some payments on the back. I told y'all why I did it. I don't have no shame with that. I'm just glad I had the option to do it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, ain't no shame. 
Rico, they want to talk about the education. I went to Norfolk State University. I went to a HBCU in Virginia. And then I went to a seminary in Dayton, Ohio. Then I gained employment at a for-profit, reputable for-profit university. And they paid for my education. And I took it. But they were regionally accredited. And then I worked at another for-profit, regionally accredited institution, and my tr credits transferred, and I took four classes and finished another degree. Now, let me say this. I went to Norfolk, then Cheney. Come on, Cheney. We praying for Cheney because they want to merge Cheney with these other schools. Cheney is one of the first historical black colleges in the country, and we need to preserve Cheney and Lincoln. Those are our only Northeastern universities. I think we have um, Cheney, Lincoln, and Mecca Evers College, and they're the only, they're our Northeastern HBCUs. They're not Southern HBCUs, they're Northern HBCUs, and we need to we need to uh, maintain them. Now, I say all of this. I have been doing research on colleges. And I'm like, is Ivy League schools worth it if you don't get financial aid? And if you're a person who has to pay for an Ivy League college degree, it may not be worth it. Wealthy people can pay for it. And people who are dirt poor but have academic standings will get financial aid. Middle-class people, not so much. And let me tell you about colleges like Yale, Harvard, Cornell, Columbia, Brown, University of Pennsylvania, and those seven sister schools. They're going to be teaching from the same books. You're going to get the same lesson. The only difference is that it is so competitive in nature. First of all, to get in the school is competitive. And it's like a designer brand. Brahman is a very good bag. But Louis Vuitton has been around longer. And so people are going to pay that money. And that's the same thing with the schools. So what I'm trying to say is when you go to a Yale or Harvard, it's so competitive and you're, you're number one at your high school, but when you get to Yale and Harvard, you just like everybody else. Everybody was the Valley Victoria. So, so what? You have to compete to get in your major and your classes. You're not guaranteed to get in the classes. You got to get accepted. I went to Norfolk State. I could sing in the choir if I had ability. And it was very open. You can't do that at Harvard and Yale. You have to be accepted to get in clubs and you have to compete. And they make everything competitive. This is why they have a high rate of people checking out. This is why a lot of people are checking out, meaning that they take themselves out of the world because of the pressure. And that's what those schools do. Another thing is that you may get the best instructors. They may be world renowned. But most of those students are not getting taught by those teachers. They may get taught by TAs which is teacher's assistants, because the name of the game in Ivy League schools and big state Ivies like University of Texas and UCLA and um, UC Berkeley is research. And if you don't do research, you may not get tenure. So a lot of these professors are doing research. And you may not get the attention you need. However, the competitive nature, the, the 
massive amount of homework. And I keep hearing Ivy League students say they never get anything done. They never get anything done. They have so many reading assignments and that's what they do because they really want to weed people out. You're going to get the same education. Now, I've had a lot of students to go to community colleges and small state institutions and private schools. And because the class sizes are smaller and those professors focus on teaching, not so much research, they come out a little adjusted, a better adjusted. So I'm not saying Ivy League schools are bad. I just think that they're competitive to weed people out. And it's like what they have going on is their name. And let me say this, a lot of these Ivy League schools sold black folk to keep themselves open. And they were a big part of slave trade. They were a big part of eugenics, meaning that white people are superior to black people. And this is why you see some of these schools. Now you're seeing a big push to act like black people have plagiarized their dissertations and their research. You're seeing that a lot. So I'm not putting down Ivy League schools. I'm just saying don't discount your education because I valued mine. And regardless of what people think, long as it's regionally accredited and it is recognized by the Southern Associations of Colleges and Schools or Middle State Association of Colleges and Schools or Higher Learning, which used to be North Central, and I only say that because those are the schools I went to. Norfolk State was um, Southern, Sachs. I went to Strayer, which was Middle State. Middle State. Um, I went to National American U, which was Middle State. And I went to, um, no, 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 they were NLC. They were Higher Learning. And then the school that I went to in Ohio was Higher Learning. So I went to three I went to three universities that had three different accrediting agencies and they're recognized. That's all that really matters. Don't let nobody downplay your education because people want to. But let me say this too. Let me let me let me give y'all some. Y'all, I love Hampton University. That's where I wanted to go. Oh, Lyric playing with her toy. I really wanted to go to Hampton University. So um I got the I got the campus tour. <laughs> Hampton University is is expensive. Very expensive. And then we got to the freshman dorm and they had no air conditioning. I'm like, wait a minute. How you going to charge people all this money and I don't have no air conditioning in James and Harkless Hall? Because I either would have to live in James or Harkless Hall. And them jokers didn't have no air conditioning and they had fans in the window. I love me some Bethune-Cookman College. I hope they got air conditioning. But when I was going to school, they had fans in the window. Now. Howard University is a different beast, and Howard University is all over the place. It's all over D.C. Howard University, I never get, I went to go visit my cousin, and he was shaking because somebody had been taken out, and their body was under his window, and so he was shaking. That Howard University is rough. However, the neighborhood has changed so much now. So where it used to be a rough neighborhood, it's been so gentrified now that you could even recognize Howard. So, um, yeah. So every university is different. And, you know, and I tell people, you're going to get the same thing. It's the instruction. If you go to a teaching college, that's the whole focus. If you go to a research institution, you're going to get that. So my thing is, it's what you do when you're there. I enjoy my um, time at Norfolk State. I enjoyed it immensely. I made friends for life. 
The Hampton Roads area was just great. It was a lot of things to do. It seemed like the Hampton Roads area would always get a concert. The concert was either at Hampton Coliseum or at the Scope. Those two places, you were going to get the concert. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it because Hampton University was across the bay. Old Dominion University was down from uh, down the street from us. Virginia Wesleyan was not too far. Regent University was there. Christopher Newport were there. We had a lot of colleges. Virginia State wasn't too far away. Virginia Union was not too far away. Um, and so it was a great time. Got a lot of military bases in that area. And I'm going to tell y'all what, Hampton Roads have some of the best churches. If you can't find no church in Virginia, at least in the Hampton Roads area, something is wrong. And I had a great time. I had a great time. And it's about the experiences as well. So, but what I'm trying to say is with your education, nobody can't take that away from you. That's something you've earned. Don't let nobody make you feel bad because you sought higher education and you completed it. Now, everybody's not going to go to college. And that's fine. Some people do on-the-job training. Some people will go to tech school. But don't let nobody try to take your experience because you went to college. And I don't care where you went. If it was valuable to you and if you learned something, if you got something out of it, then bravo. Bravo. Like I told you all, I went to school because a lot of my ancestors couldn't. You know, I'm my, my people came from the deep south. Some of the family came out of slavery. The other side of the family was sharecroppers, and they wished they could go to school. And so I look at my ancestors, and when we couldn't read, we couldn't, we couldn't go to school. It was against the law for us to know how to read, and it was against the law for other people to teach us. That told me something right there. And I'm like, you know what? My folk fought for this, and why I'm not going to go. Now, everybody's choice is different, but that's my choice. That's why I went. Now, people go for different reasons, but that's why, I, that's why I went. Yeah, everybody goes for different reasons. And in my neighborhood, I had a lot of, y'all, I grew up in a really, really nice neighborhood. When I mean by nice, it was low wealth to, you know, it was a working class neighborhood, low wealth to working class neighborhood. Trailer park on the north, grew up in that trailer park, family moved down the street, two project complexes. In, in the, so it was funny. You had two project complexes and then you had homes built and then you had the trailer park. Um, them people had low wealth, but let me tell you something. Those were the most dignified um, regal people to me. I had a neighbor across the street. She worked for this restaurant called the Neptune and it was a seafood restaurant and, and she opened that restaurant and she retired from that restaurant. Y'all know people working at a restaurant as a server and a cook. They don't make that much money, but baby, she bought her own house. It was paid for. And when she passed away, Nobody wasn't doing no collection for her funeral. She already had her plot ready. Next door to her, that neighbor used to watch me when I came home from school. She gave me a snack. I sat there and watched TV and did my homework till my mama came home. I went climbing up on her furniture. I went acting the fool because she was just as an authority figure as my parent. My parents, rather. The lady down the street, she would make um, pies and stuff. And if she made something, she made sure that I got some. 
Then my next door neighbor to me, she taught me how to reupholster chairs. It's really funny because she went to Norfolk State when it was um, Norfolk Virginia, uh, U Norfolk uh, Unit of Virginia Union. She went there in 1932, and we talked about that. And she she was she she loved the arts and crafts, and she was awesome. And her her husband was pretty much like Fred Sanford. He dealt with Savage and all of that stuff, but lived right next to me. Then my other neighbor, he was a landscaper, and when I needed extra money, I would go cut grass, and he helped me out. The other neighbor, I mean, I knew my neighbors. The other neighbor, he was a pastor. I knew his grandkids. I taught some of his grandkids. Then we had, um, I can't call her name. I'm going to call her Crazy Angie. That's not her real name. But baby, she loved some me. And my mom would leave me with her sometimes. And baby, she would play solitaire. I never forget, she would play solitaire. And, and the people who were down the street north of us, my mom knew them from the trailer park because they were friends. So we still knew I could not go down the street without somebody knowing me or up the street. And I saw these people go to work every day. A lot of them didn't have no degrees, but they were working people and they worked hard. And it was community and they raised us. We didn't sass back at them. The person who knew my mama down the street and my daddy down the street had just as much as authority to check me. And they did because my mom and dad would say, I know you checked him. I know you didn't let him do that. And that's how I grew up. And I value that because a lot of our kids don't have that today. And I value that. And those people did not have degrees. But those people said, we want you to go to school. Because we want you to do better than we did. We want you to go to school. And I'm going to tell you what, those people who lived in the projects, most of them jokers went to school. And a lot of them bought their mom, they, pur they purchased their mom and dad homes. I have a lot of friends who live in that trailer park. I have a friend who lived in that trailer park, stayed with her grandmama. She is now a teacher and an administrator in the school systems in Georgia. I've seen people's lives change. I was talking to a friend of mine because um, we had a friend to pass away and we were on the phone and this girl lived in the roughest apartments in the city, but she's married. She graduated from Talladega in Alabama. She's doing her thing. Successful. And we talk about that because we came from the hood. And I can appreciate that. So when people say you think you better, I don't think I'm better than nobody. But I know what education can do. I don't know what it does for other people, but I can tell you what it did for me. And that's why I value it. Not to put somebody down, but it helped bring me up. And that's the real. And that's who I am. I don't despise where I came from. I embrace it. Those people had low wealth, but low wealth didn't mean you were dirty. Low wealth didn't mean you stole. Low wealth means that you did something and helped your children to do better. And I, and I value that. I really do. That's why I could go home and talk to my elderly, um, my senior citizens, because they poured so much into us. And even though I lived in the hood, I know what a Bo Cotillion is. I know what going to a debutante ball is. Because even though we grew up in a very mixed community where some of us were wealthy, and some of us were low wealth, and some of us was working class, they wanted all of our black brothers and sisters to have meaningful experiences. 
And we all grew up together in the same church or went to the same schools. And that was the beautiful part about it. Because some people were wealthier than others, but we can still call each other. And I never forget when we used to come home from college and we used to go to the Pizza Hut. Lord have mercy. We would go to the Pizza Hut. This is when Pizza Hut was popular. And we would sit and just talk about what we were doing and how excited we were to be in college. Some of us lived in the suburbs and their parents had high wealth. Some of us went back to the hood, but we all got to that pizza hut and we all cheered each other on. I had a friend right now. He lived right to my, he lived right next to my grandmama in a predominantly black neighborhood. And he's a principal of a school. His mama used to smoke Newports and drink a little beer. And sang in the choir. Lord have mercy. I, could, I wish I could, I could call her name. And she was no joke. She would cut somebody. But they're successful. Because. They wanted their children to do better than they did. And that's what I value people. See that's me in a nutshell. So. It doesn't hurt my feelings when people talk about my house and stuff and all that. I'm grateful for what I have because I know what it is to not have a big house. I'm grateful for what I have. I, I'm proud that I have um, two vehicles and, and you know, but I'm grateful. Not to put it in somebody's face is because I work hard. Have I had some setbacks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it caused by YouTube? Some of it sure was, yeah. But I said I refuse to let anybody run me off. I just have to do things differently. I grew up in a racist Florida. I didn't know how bad Florida was until I came back home. I was raised in a school district where they weren't really happy because we had black people and they had these blue ribbon A plus schools. And it's really funny because people don't understand that you don't have to be in an inner city school to have a bad school. You can be in a, a wealthy school district where they just want to pass you through because they don't want to mess up their standing as a blue ribbon school. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful that the Kennedy Space Center was built in my area because I saw that my agricultural area where people picked oranges, that Kennedy Space Center in one generation generated wealth for black people to let black people have a major middle class. Because the only way to get to the middle class being a black person in my county at the time was to be a teacher, to be a postal worker. That was it, probably, unless you owned your own business. But the Kennedy Space Center came, and great jobs and space technology came. And all I will say is a lot of my family benefited from that. I have a sibling, worked for a space defense company for 42 years and retired. And I'm so proud of her. With only an associate's degree, God will do it. So I know what God can do. And so when people say, you don't like, I tell people, you don't know my life. And thank God that we had some spirituality. Now, again, I truly believe that your walk with Christ is personal. I don't question people's salvation. The Bible said, if thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, which is Yeshua, because it was no J in Greek, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, ye shall be saved. And that's what I believe. I also believe love the Lord with all your heart and soul and, and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the greatest of the commandments. I believe that. But I don't question people's salvation. I really don't, because I don't know your walk. But I can tell you, God has been really good to me. And I'm grateful for everything that I have. I am grateful for all God is blessed. The good times and the bad times. You will never know good times unless you have some bad times. 
I don't want to be with anybody who ain't never had no bad times. I thank God for my wealthy friends and my poor friends. Because, honey, my poor friends knew how to get them um, food stamps. They knew how to get that um, them, them, them um, benefits. They knew how to do unemployment. Thank God. I thank God for everybody who's came in my life. I, I really do. And I'm not just speaking crap today. This is why I laugh at people who talk about you think you're better than people. No, I don't. Maybe it's the people with low wealth who know all the resources. So when you get laid off, you can just give them a call and they'll walk you through the whole process. But it's a blessing when I can say, girl, it's a job and I think you'll be good for it now. Don't, don't mess up my name. And then they do well. And now you see them do well. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. I, I am so immensely blessed. And, and I'm saying this for a reason. Maybe somebody need to hear it. And I don't care if it's 100 people or 7 to 8 people. But I never forget, I had a friend, and I'm not going to call his name out because, again, for privacy. But he had just got out of um, prison. And I remember this guy because this guy was an uh, athlete, attractive. Everybody liked him. And he still was, you know, you go to prison, get bucked up and everything. And he was trying to start his life. He was on drugs real bad. Y'all, let me tell you something. I never forget. He was on drugs so bad. And I saw him at the store. You know, everybody got a store. And he was riding a bicycle. He said, I'm, I'm so sad. that He said, I'm so ashamed that you got to see me this way. I said, let me tell you something, man. I said, you going to make it. I said, you going to make it. I'm not here to judge you. You going to make it. So I came back home. He went to prison. He got clean in prison. And he was really trying to get a job. And we were talking about that because he was staying with his mom. Mom lived in public housing, you know, but he, he had to do something. He was looking for a job. Y'all, now let me tell you something. Y'all may think this is shady. But he was missing front teeth. He was missing his front teeth. And so every time he smiled or did something, he ain't had no front teeth. And I had to have a real serious conversation with him. I'm like, look, you're going to get a job. But I want, I'm going to tell you this. I don't want you to be upset. I'm telling you this because I want to help you. I said, but you got to do something with your front teeth because you don't have any. I said, and you know, it kind of hurt him a little bit. I said, look, I'm not saying this to hurt your feelings, but I have a friend who works in a program to help people get um, permanent teeth and you qualify for it because of your income and where you came out from call this lady and she's going to help you he took it he called her I came back home that man had a job it was hard for me to tell him because I didn't want to hurt his feelings but I knew that was the truth and he thanked me he said it hurt me but I knew you were trying to help me That's some real stuff, y'all. See, you can't, you, can't, you can't help nobody when you think you're better than they are. See, this is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. I, I don't think I'm better than people. That was my friend. That boy was on drugs. I saw God just, just change his life. I've had a lot of friends on drugs because we lived in the inner city and everybody didn't, everybody didn't make it. I had a friend, she was on drugs. I said, no, you can't come in my house. I said, I'm going to take you where you need to go. But you can't come in my house because if you steal something, it's going to be on. Now, I was real. I was real. i never forget. She said she needed some tampons. I took her to the corner store. Y'all, I went to go buy the tampons and people was looking at me like, what? I bought her them tampons. I bought them. She said, what is this? I said, tampons. And she said, this is what you needed. 
I said, oh, you think I was going to give you some money? I said, now, if you want some money, you go sell these tampons. <laughs> oh, my God, that girl was so funny. But one day she went to church with me. And it went about me. She kept on saying, I'm going to go to church with you. I said, okay. And one day she was dressed. She knocked on the door. It was Sunday. I'm like, yeah. She said, I'm going to church. She was dressed. Okay. So we went to church. And let me tell you how God works. And see, y'all, I'm, I'm coming from a real place on today. Let me tell you how God works. We went to the church. And it happened to be a lady who used to run the streets with her. And she was on drugs real bad. But this lady had, you know, made a recovery, got married, gave her life to the Lord. And she kept on looking at the lady. And she said, I know her. I know her. And she said, I know. And she went to the lady and the lady said, girl, you looking. She said, you looking good. And she said, hey, I ain't seen you in a long time. And they reminisce how they used to run them streets together. And she said, yeah, I got tired of them streets and stuff. And I just gave my life to the Lord and got a job and got off of drugs. And she said, because, girl, we used to do it out there. She said, we was gang. She said, we was banging and slanging out there. And, and that had a big impact on that lady. And she kept on saying, and, and it had nothing to do with me. The only thing I was was a tool to get her to church. God didn't use me. He, he used me to get her to church. But he sent the water from that lady who planted that seed. Because it was meant for her to go to church that day. Because I truly believe that God knew that lady was going to be there. It wasn't about me. My whole goal, my whole assignment was to get her there. And all she could talk about was how good that lady looked. She said she was looking so bad. She was on crack with me. But she looked so good. That's all she could think about. I came home five years later, and that woman is a drug counselor now. The woman who I said, no, you ain't going to come in my house because if you steal, is going to be on, is a drug counselor now, helping people get off of drugs. You can't help people who you think you're better than. And I'm, I'm real about that. Because see, I've had friends and people who I grew up with to get hooked on drugs. I know what that looks like. I know what it is to have to take clothes and toiletries in a Ziploc bag so they can take a bath. I know what that's like. So when people say, you think you better, no, you don't know me. You know Jay Wilson, but you don't know me. And sometimes you got to let people know because some people get it twisted. I don't think I'm better than anybody else. I came from an inner city. I came from, when I looked at Moonlight, that movie touched me. That had to be one of my favorite movies. And it wasn't about the sex. It wasn't about, it was about a coming of age story. It was about these young guys who grew up in the hood in Florida where there was this hyper-masculinity and all of these drugs, but yet they loved each other. And one knew he was soft. The other one played the role real well. And as he said, I was much of nothing. I was what people wanted me to be. And then as they grew older, one lived his truth and the other one ran from it. But yet they loved each other. And yet that was set in Florida. That that hood, not that tropical vacation cruise ship Florida, but that drug selling, you can get shot walking down the street, Florida. 
that movie was touching to me. I loved it. People hated the ending because they wanted some sex. Uh Uh-uh. Just them sitting there and that man rubbing that man's head. When he said that you the only man that ever touched me. Now, some people may be like, "Mm." no, that was deep. Because that was somebody's experience. (sighs) That movie was deep. I'm glad it won. They tried to give it to La La Land. But that's a deep story. That movie was touching to me. So I know what that is. Now, I didn't have to run home and I didn't get beat up because I could sing, I could play, and I had talent. And I learned in the Black community, if you can sing and if you have talent, people don't mess with you. And if you're an athlete, because I was an athlete as well. So people don't bother you when you're an athlete. Ran track, played basketball, didn't have any issue. Nobody bothered me. Hold on for a minute. Lyric, get out that garbage. Go to other bed. Go to other bed. Good girl. So, I didn't have those problems. And I was fortunate. Didn't get into fights and stuff. Didn't have to do that. Excelled in college. Didn't care for high school too much. The only thing that really kept me in high school and that, because I could sing. I was in choir. And that helped me because I kept my grades up because I wanted to play basketball. I wanted to run track and, you know, do choir. I was in the band as well. So those fine arts kept me in school. I didn't know what I was going to do. For college. I, I, I didn't know. You know, people planned. I was happy to get out of high school. I knew I wasn't going into the military. I don't have anything against the military, but I wasn't built for that. I wasn't built for that. That's why I didn't join a fraternity, because I'm not built for that. I am not built for that. If you hit me, we're going to fight. <laughs> so I wound up going to a college in Miami. And I said, this college is not for me. It was a good experience. I needed to be there. It showed me that I needed to go somewhere else. And I went to Virginia. I left the whole state of Florida to go to school in Virginia. And that's where I needed to be. Went to, wanted to go to Hampton, didn't work out. But the school that I went to in Virginia had the major that I wanted. I wanted to be a voice major, but I wanted to do mass communications. And the school that I went to in Hampton did not have that dual major. But Norfolk State did. They were the only school at that particular time that had that program. And so I enrolled and got in. And I've been blessed. I have been blessed. I have really been blessed. I'm blessed to be able to see 54 going on to 55. A lot of people have not made it to that point. I'm blessed. So all I tell you all today is be blessed and know that even trials and tribulations are coming to make you strong. And if God brought you to it, he's going to take you through it. I know people want to throw them cliches out, but I truly believe it. And I believe as long as you're living, you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. It's how you approach the situation. Yes, straight from the gate, I'm a, I'm a Spartan. Behold the green and gold. So, um... That's where I am, you all. I don't question people's salvation and they walk with God. I I think it's despicable when people want to do that because I may not like you, but I don't, I'm not God. I always tell people, let the wheat grow with the tares because God will do the separating. 
God will do the separating. God ain't never called me to separate nothing. Oh, hello, somebody. I'm reminded of Gamaliel, who was a great leader, who was Paul's teacher, Saul at the time. And he said, wait a minute. You all getting ready to do something to these men. He said, now we've had a lot of people come this way. And when they come in self, it's going to come to not. But if this is of God, we could be very well fighting against God. Now that's Gamaliel. And that's what he told the council. And it's very ironic that the apostle Paul, who was Saul at the time, was persecuting Christians because he thought he was doing right. And he had to fall to his knees. A great light hit him and he fell to his knees. And according to scripture, now this is if you're in the Christian context, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And all I'm telling y'all is let God do the separating. And if it ain't a God, it ain't going to come to nothing. But if it is God, you could be very well fighting against God. And that's why I keep my mouth off of folk when it comes to their salvation and, and their uh, relationship with God. That's not my place. And I know a lot of people think certain things about me. But that's fine. That's fine. Just don't bother me. But my thing is my walk. I don't judge you. I don't judge that because, again, if you really knew scripture, you would really know that God will do the separate. And it's his decision, God's decision. So that's what I think, y'all. And that's where I am. Somebody gave me a nasty piece of coin. Who gave me a nasty piece of coin? Oh, my God. Come on, um, Haitian princess. Haitian princess, girl, you did that. Thank you, Haitian princess. Oh, my gosh. She gave me a happy belated birthday present. Girl, that was a, that was a blessing. But look, you all. I'm getting ready to lay it on down. I thank you all for coming on in. I'm not moved by numbers. I'm moved by content. And my content may not be for everybody right now. Some people like different things. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'm content. And that's all you can be. So look, you all have a great... Hey, Haitian Prince has blessed me. My God today. My God today. She came on in and did that thing. And she did it suddenly. And she did it suddenly. So anyway, look, take this live and apply it to your life. Don't let nobody turn you around. Don't let nobody despise and, and try to take away from your accomplishments. Get with people who can celebrate you. Get with friends who are not rubber stampers, who going to look out for your best interest. If they see you got toilet paper on your shoes, they're going to let you know. If you got a booger in their nose, they're going to touch their nose so you'll know. If your breath is bad, they're going to give you a piece of gum and say, no, sis, you really need to chew that gum. Those are the people you need to be around. But they're going to say, you know what? Go for it. Go for it. Y'all, I had a friend. And she was in real estate in Atlanta. And when that real estate bust happened, it really affected her income. But she also had to go and take care of her sister who had a terminal illness. And she was with her sister until the end. And she felt led to go into nursing. She really felt led to go into nursing. But she felt that she was too old. She called me and we had a conversation. I said, look, that real estate market is up and down. But if you felt led to go to nursing, go into nursing. Go into nursing. And she started talking about finances. I said, girl, 
I said, you better look into the WIA. It was WIA then. It's now called Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. It was Workforce Innovation Act. And I said, because you're switching careers, real estate at this particular point is on a downward trajectory because of this real estate bust. But healthcare is on the upswing. And if you've been a laid off or displaced worker, WIA will pay for you to go back to school. She went to nursing. She got her whole degree paid for. She already had a degree in mathematics, but she got her whole two-year RN nursing degree paid for. She finished her BSN. Um, She wound up going to, I believe, Armstrong State University in Savannah. And she said, I really appreciate you telling me this because I didn't know about this. And now she's a nurse. And we talk about that. Y'all, God has placed us in people's lives for reasons. And that's my friend. But she was never too old, and now she's a nurse. Come on now. I'm trying to let you all know that you all can do it. Leave these people alone who talk about some, you know, baby, you too old. No, no, you got to move. You got to move. My thing is now, I told her, though, that you're going to have to study because in that nursing field, hey, people don't die if I hit the wrong note. But if you get the wrong dosages, somebody can leave here. So I told her it's an intense program. And I said, in nursing school, they try to weed you out because y'all don't understand that nursing school stays open according to who passed their NCLEX. So if you have a big old class and they don't have a uh, uh, NCLEX pass rate that they need, their school can close. So this is why they try to kick nurses out. This is why people are not really too nice to nursing students because the bottom line is if they don't think you can pass that NCLEX test, they don't want you. That's just the truth. Yeah, Rico. So she wound up doing it. And, and again, you all, somebody encouraged me. People was telling me I shouldn't be a flight attendant. Oh my God, I heard it. And I'm like, are you a flight attendant? No. I'm like, well, how do you know? So it was this lady in my town and she worked for TWA and then she wound up going to Eastern and then she wound up going to Delta. But we talked and she said, I think you'll be a good flight attendant. She said, know that your first two years, you're going to be broke and you're going to be on call. But she said it gets better out there. And she said, it's hard work. She said, you know, you you may think it's a glamorous job. Now the flight attendants really don't have to do a whole lot. But back in the day, they did. But at least she gave me a realistic viewpoint of what was going on. She encouraged me to do it. She thought I would be a good candidate. But she told me the real expectation so I would have a realistic view. And that's what you should do. Never discourage people. Give them a realistic view. So hopefully this has helped somebody, you all. Um, Either you're part of the problem or part of the solution. And I really want to be a part of the solution. Don't let people talk you out of stuff. Don't let people live in your head rent-free. I really mean that. When people always got negative things to say about you, they really don't like themselves because people who are positive always trying to uplift people, even in their worst situations. Y'all, like I said, I'm not, you know, me and Deanna are not close on YouTube. Uh, She may despise me on YouTube, but again, you know, I don't want nobody page to be snatched or anybody to be threatened in that manner. I don't think it's right, whether I like you or not. So let's look for the best in people. And even if we don't get along with them, you know, yeah. Yeah. People thought I was going to laugh at ZX because his car was turned over on its roof. And and I said, Jesus, what? I'm not going to sit there and lie. I really wasn't feeling to be like all fake. I'm so sorry. No, I said, Jesus, what? Now, I did talk about the situation where he was outside the car taking pictures and stuff and then acting like he was hurt because <laughs> it was giving me money grab tease. But that's a whole new different thing. But I wasn't rejoicing that his car had flipped over. 
I'm just saying. So I said what I said. Y'all have a good night. Again, I would like to thank Haitian princes for that old nasty piece of birthday gift money. I really appreciate you. You don't have to do that. That is your personal money, and you don't you don't have to share your resources with me. But I do thank you, and I do appreciate it because you thought enough of me to send it. So thank you so very much. I would like to thank the content creators who are here. I see Rico the Sleaze. I guess it's Rico the Brat, but Rico the Sleaze. I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to all the ushers and all the people who are here. Thank you all for coming. And you all probably see me in the morning. Be blessed. And I will talk to you all later. Have a good night.